Good morning. How is everybody doing? Just another day living the simple life here in uh, Utah. Every day is a blank canvas. It is what you make out of it. But I don't think today is going to be a masterpiece painting by any means. It's more of a, a rough sketch. I got a bunch of laundry I need to do. I got like an inch of dirt on the floor that needs to be vacuumed up. So let's get going. Let's get to work. I don't know why, but I've never mentioned this on the channel. A viewer sent this in to me. I really appreciate it. I love it. Uh, if you want to check out Drew's artwork, he's on Instagram. His handle is uh, wordgra. Another thing that a viewer has made for me is this knife, and it is like one of my most favorite possessions ever. I'm so glad that he made this for me and sent it. Uh, if you want to check him out, he's also on Instagram at Bluff Country Customs. The town of Price is about a half hour north of here. It's the best place to go locally for groceries and uh, whatever else you need. Now we gotta move around to the other side, fill up the diesel. last stop to get groceries this is kind of like a behind the scenes video normally I just get all this stuff done and I start recording as I head out into the wilderness but for some reason I've had a, a craving for a Philly cheesesteak sandwich lately how exactly do I make one of these uh, ribeye steak uh, onion bell pepper provolone and some bread rolls so see if I can get set up with all this Well, I think that's everything I need here in Price. I'm going to hit the road. I want to go down south. Uh, that's the Buckhorn Draw. I want to go like around it up on the northern part of the swell and explore around this area. So let's go.
there's still another half hour of driving to reach a location where I want to go hiking. I just stopped here because my battery is all charged up, but I'm going to do some cooking and air frying tonight. So then tomorrow morning when I leave, I can charge up my battery a little bit more. But that up there, that's, uh, that's Cedar Mountain. There's a road that goes to the top, but I think it's snowed in right now. It must have been destiny. I was supposed to have a Philly cheesesteak tonight. They just so happen to have this uh, finely sliced ribeye. Normally I go for a big hike before I cook a meal like this. Enjoy it a little more when I feel like I've uh, earned it. First I grabbed these uh, frozen French rolls, but then I had a second thought. I went back and grabbed uh, the Pillsbury French bread. So I'll try this instead. There's no uh, air fryer directions on here, so I don't know. I'll just try like 320 for 10 minutes and see what happens. It says on the directions this will be about 14 inches long, but my air fryer tray is only about uh, 8 inches. So I'll cut this in half and uh, try that. Oh, shoot, 10 minutes was not quite enough. Right, we'll get it next time, maybe uh, 16, 17 minutes, 325. I think this is still gonna be really good though. This turned out really good. The fresh bread was key. It took it to another level. A part of me wish it had some uh, sauce on there, but I don't think that's authentic. This is uh, the way it's supposed to be enjoyed like this. If I still had an appetite, I'd try one with a little uh, Stubbs barbecue sauce on there. So it's uh, similar to a pulled pork sandwich. But if you're from Philadelphia and you've had an authentic one on the street, let me know how I did, what I should do differently. All right, so this morning I'll drive over to that area. I want to try to hike and explore around there for the day. I'll just leave my chimney on. It's not too far of a drive. I've only accidentally left it on once. I hit 60 mile an hour. It didn't go flying off, but I've seen some people, they leave theirs on permanently. You can uh, drive some screws through it to hold it on. I just thought if you're driving in the rain that it would suck up a bunch of water, but maybe it's not an issue. 
It, uh, I think it looks kind of goofy, though, when you're driving around on the highway with a chimney sticking out of your roof. And also, I mean, you'd think that, like, wind would be going down into it and uh, blowing soot into uh, your van, which is a carcinogen. I mean, that can't be healthy. So I made sure the damper is closed right now. And, uh, yeah, let's get going. Is that actually a trail? According to my GPS, it is. Doesn't look too promising. I could drive up this, but it doesn't get any better further on. It'll just be a rock crawl. I can walk faster than I can uh, <laughs> drive the van through this stuff. So I'll get my backpack and we'll start off from here. I think these boots have just about reached the end of their lifespan. These ones are made by Aku. They've done the job, but I'll likely go back to uh, Scarpa after this. I like what they have to offer the most. I'll just uh, order some to my mailbox in Canada, and I think I'll be back up there around April to pick them up. Today, the goal is to uh, hike and see if there's a way to drop down into like the northwest end of Spring Canyon. So we'll go see what's there. So I'm at the mouth of the canyon now. I'm looking to see if I can find a nice gradual ramp that will drop me down into there and I can connect onto that piece where it was in the last video. All right, so I made it down this first part, no problem. Continue another two and a half kilometers to where there's like this steep looking drop off on my topographic map. Hopefully there's a way through it. I don't think this canyon gets hiked too often. People usually flock to the ones with pictographs and cliff dwellings, but you think there must be something out here. All right, I'm just almost to the edge of this big drop off. We'll see what it's all about. It's a significant drop off, that's for sure. I have to put Rocco in my jacket. I don't trust her. I mean, it's a really beautiful viewpoint, but I need to see if I can actually get down this. So there's only two canyons that lead in this direction. I've checked both of them now. Another one works. They're both uh, cliffed out like this. So that's just, uh, that's just dark and smoky. I really needed this one to work out for me. So back to the drawing board. Hopefully uh, there's a third option that I can find. Good morning. Looks like we got ourselves a rainy and dreary day today. There's something uh, marked on the map nearby here called the Spirit Railroad. So let's take a quick drive over there and see what that's all about. T 
TLDR, they tried to build a railroad out here in uh, 1881. I don't think it was ever finished, but in this area, there are a few historic sites to look at. So down in here, there's remnants of a couple uh, stone buildings that they had. They had a fireplace, and this one still somewhat intact. And also this uh, lonely little chimney. I don't know what this is about, why it's here. I guess it's possible there's a wooden building around it at one time that just got washed away. You can see on the other side there above uh, where the stone huts are that they were digging out the railway bed. So they must have been planning on building a trestle across this uh, canyon. This terrain is just so rugged. It's all up and down and they're digging through all this bedrock. No wonder they didn't finish it. Well there you go, just a unique slice of history sitting in the middle of nowhere, Utah, but the days are starting to get longer, April and May are quickly approaching, and as far as I know, that's the best time of year to explore Utah because uh, it's the dry season, and it's also not like overwhelmingly and painfully hot. But like I said, I'll probably head back up into Canada in the next couple of weeks. Um, but if you've been following the news, this has been a really bad year for avalanches. There's been a, a number of tragedies, so everyone needs to uh, continue being careful out there. I've had a few close calls myself. It just happens so fast, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, yeah, I've been uh, I've been kind of interested uh, lately in like the whole uh, bushcraft and shelter building genre. It's something that I'd like to explore more in the future. Try uh, more of those episodes. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I think that's uh, the end of another episode. So thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everyone uh, over there on uh, Patreon for your support. And I uh, hope everyone's doing good, and uh, I'll see you soon in uh, the next episode. So, see you then.